It's time to mind your business with me, Jamila Lodge. Tune in to find out how to mind your business with BEDC, special guest entrepreneurs, industry experts, and more. Brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here. Hi. I'm excited. Hi. <laughs> Um, so I am so happy to have you on Mind Your Business. You are Dr. Karika Weldon. Yes, I am. Yay. <laughs> One of my um, favorite people in Bermuda right oh, now because of all that. the things that you're doing. Thank you. Uh, you are the founder of Carrie Genetics. Yes. And we are going to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and all of the great stuff that you're doing. Okay. Before I do that, mm-hmm. I'll give you an opportunity. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I am Dr. Karika Weldon, as you said. I am a Bermudian biochemist and geneticist. And uh, my goal in life was not to start a company, <laughs> as you know very I well. Know uh, we're going to get into that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was inspired by my actual last gig, mm-hmm. I'll call it, when I was in charge of bringing us COVID testing. And that actually opened my eyes to the fact that there is a space in the market. Mm-hmm. And I'm very goal oriented. You know, being a scientist, you like, you know, results, results, results. And I was like, this could translate into mm-hmm. making some money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I'm just excited to be here and especially be in this podcast because as we're going to get into, you guys were an integral part of this journey and to like see where we've gotten to now is kind of like amazing. It's amazing to me yeah. actually to see it actually. <laughs> um, so talk to me a little bit about Little Dr. Weldon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> before before Karika was a doctor, right. like, how did you decide that you wanted to be a scientist? Like, what was that like? So, I was always from, as I'm told, mm-hmm. so I don't remember, but from even before preschool, was always, like, very analytical. Okay. So, my mom and dad told me, like, you know, when I learned the alphabet, because they taught me a lot of stuff at home before I went preschool, I learned it forwards and I decided to teach myself to do it backwards. Mm. And I was at just as fast backwards as I was doing it forwards. Mm-hmm. So they're like, okay, this That's is interesting. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and um, so actually when I got to preschool, shout out to work preschool. Um, <laughs> you know, <That's> my, yeah. <laughs> um, when I got there, like the teachers were like, you know, to my parents, like, wait, you, you basically taught her everything we were going to teach her already. Like mm-hmm. what are we going to do? And they had some ideas, um, but they, they definitely picked up by like patterns, mm-hmm. so I can like patterns was my thing, and just like the analytical side of things. So it was mm-hmm. always like science and math was gonna be the thing for me. Right. Um, when I got into like school, I went to BI for two years. I did the math book for I think for yeah, kindergarten mm-hmm. in half the year, and then did grade one in the other half of that same year. Mm-hmm. So I had done two books of math in one year, right. and then I was going up. My whole primary school life was going up a grade for math. Mm-hmm. So it was always like, okay, yeah, this is going to be, it's going to be in that side in STEM. Right. Um, but for the most part, everyone thought I was going to become an actuary because I was doing like extra math classes after yeah. school with um, CTY when I was in the first cohort yeah. for that and was doing actuarial science like, you know, in high school, or after school for, just for fun. But I really just loved on the science side, like, mm-hmm. how does the world work? Like, even something as simple as like, moving my hand up and down like this, like, how does my brain tell my hand to, to do, do that? that? Like, yeah. what is going on? And that's what fascinated me more. Also, I'm very much a people person. And at the time, I was like, you know, I really love science. I love children. I, I, I love medicine. Mm-hmm. So the goal was, like, okay, let me become a pediatrician. Okay. So that was the goal. But I always said, you know what, like, I don't think I can sit behind a desk and crunch numbers. <laughs> I think that's a little bit boring, although it's for some people, right. but not for me. And so, yeah, science was just the path that I chose because of that. Also, I'm very curious. Like, I mm. want to know why. Why, like, even... As a child, like, why am I doing this? Right. If like, I'm convicted, then I would, I would do it. But I really want to know, like, why things were the way they were. And so, you know, that scientific curiosity. Yeah. So from my standpoint, a lot of those traits are very entrepreneurial. Right. 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 And so um, I know when we met and you were working, like you said, managing our COVID response mm-hmm. and all of that, mm-hmm. um, the fact that you were like, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> No, ma'am, no, thank you. I, I just want to do the things. I was so and adamant as well. You were adamant. And to see you now in this space, and to me, you're <laughs> flourishing. Like, it, <sighs> yes. it it seemed a natural fit for me. Like, right. I always thought it made sense. Yeah. So what ha- what happened? <laughs> what Which light switch went off <laughs> for you to say, you oh, know what, God. I actually can do this right. thing. So I, I had that same, like, attitude even when I, so when I resigned last 
January. Yeah. I know it seems like it was ages ago, but no, it does. Last January. Um, and I finished that. And I like, took some time to just regroup. And I picked back up this project because I always wanted to bring research to Bermuda. Mm -hmm. I was in England for 12 years. And I was like, you know, we could do this at home. Right, like, right. I want to do this at home. Right. And, you know, I remember when I was going away to school, I got scholarships. And the question was always like, so what are you going to do with that? I was yeah. like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm but just I going. Like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm it. enjoying myself. And then obviously, you know, dun, 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 global pandemic. Yeah. So I can do it with it now. Yeah. So it was very clear. Um, I think that helped crystallize as well partly although when we had the conversation yeah. i was like no but i could see that this is a big deal like it, health is important it touches every single person it doesn't matter how rich you are how poor you are what country you're from health is like across the board like yes. you always have a job in health and there's always going to be a market for right. health right so that kind of was like oh noted um but i was just like not for me yeah <laughs> um and then i started putting the project back together and it was always a non-profit research center yes and I went to one of my advisors, who at the time was um, very much like, that makes no sense. Um, so that was um, Sir John Swan. I, I, I love him. Yeah, Sir John Swan was like, much. this should be a company. I was like, yeah. mm, but that's not the industry standard, you know? Yeah. Normally it's a research center, like it's non profit, you get grants, mm -hmm. and, you know? And he told me that I literally met him like in February 2022. And he was just like, there should be a business. And I was like, mm, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like, you know, let it simmer for a bit. And I started to realize, obviously, with COVID globally, the third sector took a big hit. Yes, it did. And especially in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, OK, because I had a I had a, a science charity before. Yes, you right? did. The Bermuda Principles yeah. Foundation. And, you know, I was I was pretty good at raising money for that as well, like donations. But I was just like, OK, if it was difficult then, because it you know, still has to kind of pull mm -hmm. teeth a little bit. It's going to be even more difficult now. Yes. And yes, you know, there's potential international grants, but we're a little old Bermuda. Yeah. Like, so we're already on the back foot. It's not like we're in the U.S. where you have NIH. Especially and, in this industry, Especially though. in this in, Right. And so it's like, okay, the big access to funding that if I was in the U.S. that I would have, like, to apply for NIH or NSF funding, mm -hmm. I don't have that. Yeah. We don't have a Bermuda Science Council. No, we don't. Right. So it was like, okay, actually... I, I remember it was July. I went back to Sir John. I said, I think it should be a company. He's like, I told you, man. Like, because mm. now it's like, hey, actually, we have access to investor capital. Yes. And then also, apart from that, you know, I have found another company, and that helped mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. They were formed in Africa. Okay. Uh, at the time, three years prior. Mm -hmm. And they were flourishing. They had raised like 45 million in two years. Like it was like, I was like, oh, okay, so it's possible. Yeah. Like, let's let's go. And okay. so that was the, 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 thing, switch the, the switch last the July. And so from that point, it said, okay, I'm going to do a company. And then by September, we had it incorporated as a company. And then off you to just, the races. Yeah. So, like, what was the, the big thing? Like, talk to me about what the ethos of Carry Genetics is. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What are you trying to do? And then we could talk a little bit about what you have done so yes. far. Okay, so the name is actually off of Caribbean Genetics, okay. right? Initially, we wanted that whole name. And actually, let me backtrack. So I could tell you the whole mental journey mm -hmm. to get to the name Carry Genetics. So I had was looking at, so this is still, it was a not, not a company. Yeah. Um, I was looking at a company that exists called African Ancestry, mm -hmm. right? So they do tasks for people of African descent mm -hmm. to tell them what tribe they yes, are linked correct. to, right? Yeah. And I went on their website and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I was like, oh, I want to work with them. And I went on their website and it was a part where it said 8% of their customers don't have a result that comes back. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wait, that's actually a, a high number. If I'm of African descent, right. I should be hidden somewhere in, mm -hmm. in Africa. And I said, well, maybe because they're Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Because I know that obviously in the Caribbean we have African descent, but because we've been mixed with some other things, those parts in our genetics that would match to you know the African descent mm -hmm. part um, might be slightly change right. right to have some alterations or some additions and you know there's a bit of mixing that happens when you integrate with other races so i was like maybe that's what it is so then it was like oh what about caribbean ancestry yeah right and then that domain wasn't didn't wasn't available mm -hmm. so i was like it can't be that and then it was like caribbean genetics mm -hmm. that also didn't like wasn't available someone else had it so i was like okay what about carry genetics yeah. and then it was like it was in the meeting and everyone was like that has a ring yeah, to it yeah it does i was like does the domain exist Booked it, like, it was like $3? Yeah. Right there. So that's where Carriage and Axe was brought after. I think it was like April 2022. Yeah. So the name existed from then. 
Now, becoming a company obviously happened a couple months later. Yeah. And our whole ethos is we are doing Caribbean research, creating a diverse database of genetic data mm -hmm. by us in the region mm -hmm. for us. Right. Because at the minute when it comes to medication, most of that data, and this is not a new fact, we've known mm -hmm. this for years, mm -hmm. about 90% of that data that's used to design drugs is based off of European data. Which is crazy because in terms of the total population right. of the world. Because, exactly. So, having looked into it, 15% of the world population are of European descent. So, okay. So, 85% of us are missing. Yeah. Right? So, then it became, okay, from a business perspective, that's a powerful statement. Yes, it is. That will get people's attention. Yes. Like, we can solve this for 85% of the world. Why? Because the Caribbean, or oh, there were like a... Little dot, yeah, yeah. Right? Only 44 million people out of billions. We have the genetic diversity of the world basically in one little space. Yeah. So we, we're not even just talking about improving medications for us who are of Caribbean descent, but we're talking about having a global impact from doing this same right, work. Right, because everything's kind of all put into Connected, this one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it was like, once I had that, you know, framed and crystallized, I was like, oh, this could be attractive That's for people that have hugely. money. Hugely. Right. And so that is our ethos, and that's our main goal. Mm -hmm. Anything that we do is so that we can fill the gap in genomics data. Okay. And bring that diverse data that is needed to make healthcare more equitable. And so the people who will be interested in that, now we're talking about it from a business perspective, mm -hmm. these are people who are designing the medications. These exactly. are people who want to say, well, what? how will this impact this person. Mm -hmm. So this is where, okay, now it became, okay, that's a great concept, but who's going to be your customer? Yes. Like, we're going to make money. Yes. Right? That's a big... <laughs> yes, yes. The money that sounds part. like I asked that question. Even from investors, they're like, well, potential investors are like, so how do you make money? So this is where, again, having that Amer not American, African company yes. that already had kind of blazed the trail was mm -hmm. very helpful because they had already kind of like Shown written the how script. The right, yeah. because they were doing the same thing. Yes. Right? Um, they... Yeah, that so honestly, that would mean that for me that was a big help because mm -hmm. if I didn't have them, I would have been having to, to prove to some people. Yeah. They'd be like, "How does it right. work? Like, Show that me that how doesn't it make works. sense." Yeah, yeah. But you just had a company that raised forty-five million because of the same thing, right? Um, so yeah, the main people that we really want to um, work with are the big pharma companies, mm -hmm. and we've met a few of them. We've talked to a few, a few of them. We have a few as partners who are like, you know, we once you have your diverse data. For example, there's a company we're working with that. Um, once they get to that part yeah. in their development and the tech, we can take, for example, our Caribbean breast cancer study. If we find a new genetic marker that is linked to breast cancer, you know, uh, more aggressive breast cancer in Caribbean women, mm -hmm. we can actually create a vaccine, a cancer vaccine mm -hmm. that specifically Targeted. deals with that mm -hmm. based off the genetics. Right. And we can do that. And then actually they want to help us to manufacture and distribute that in the Caribbean. Wow. So it's like, okay, this is a real thing. Yeah. So we're just literally the piece that's missing, which is the data. Mm -hmm. They don't have the data. Right. It's missing. It, exactly. Right? And then in a broader scale, and I remember this took me a while to like kind of get, but one of our investors who had done their due diligence and they spoke to people in the pharma kind of, mm -hmm. pharma, pharmaceutical industry, they actually like kind of brought it back and was like, yeah, that's a good point. Companies spend $2.8 billion dollars on average, mm -hmm. to bring a new drug to market. Wow. it's a lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. It's a whole lot of money over a long period of time. Right. And so they want to make that money back. Yeah. Right? That's why medications are so expensive because they are trying to make that $2.6 billion back. The other issue is that a lot of these drugs, well, not every drug is going to work for every person. Right. So if you think about it, the company is kind of like, throwing blind they are. chances out, like, okay, maybe this is going to work for these people. And if it doesn't, they don't have that person as a lifetime customer no, to get they that don't. money back. Right. But a more efficient way is if your drug is based off of a genetic marker, mm -hmm. all you need to do is a genetic test. And, and now you, you can identify confirm that this thing's going to work for exact, you. Exactly. And now you have your lifetime customer. Right. So actually using genetics to design drugs is becoming a lot more popular mm -hmm. because it means more efficiency for these companies to make their money back. Correct. So it's directly tied to money. Yes. And so by able to, by being able to crystallize that, because it's not like the companies are going to do it for altruistic reasons. Right. It's like, no. oh, that's just help the world. No. <laughs> so I, 
talking about altruistic <laughs> reasons, yeah. I know that the initial reason why you didn't want a company is because, like you said, this is for the people. Yeah. I'm trying to do something that's yeah. going to help us. <laughs> so now it's like, um, you can say that these are like competing forces, right? Yeah. So how are you balancing that out? Because this is a full-on entrepreneurial venture, yes. but you still have that at the foundation of why you started the business, I feel, yes. and from what I know of you, you still 100%. have that um that give back or the need for it to be for the people so yes. how are you balancing that out yeah see i, I remember that that was the gist of my that conversation whole, like, yeah. i don't want to help i don't want to <laughs> rape the country that was exactly. the time I used. so <laughs> well, what i realized is that i can help even more if i have money that's right hello that's the key <laughs> like i can help you because i have money so okay <laughs> so one of the first things is that we as a company are building local capacity. Okay. So our I staff are all Bermudian yes. or Caribbean. Yes. Right? And so that's the first way. So now what we've done, we've literally, at this moment, we have nine full-time staff mm -hmm. and all of them are Bermudian and we just created nine jobs. Yes. In the economy. Right? Love that. So in that way, we've now helped the local economy, but mm -hmm. also helped those Bermudians, especially those who I know from my last gig. Yeah. You know, we're trained in molecular diagnostics, mm -hmm. and now they don't really have anywhere to use those skills. Right. So we've been able to nurture that. The other part is our customers are not necessarily the average person. Mm -hmm. We're talking about business to business. Yes. And these businesses got money. Yes. Right? So, That's right. And we're worth... A lot. Mm -hmm. Our data is very valuable. So being able to take money from, not being Robin Hood, but take money from the industry and then being able to even set it. up like a fund. Yeah. Or, you know, there's ways that we can give back. And one of the things we want to do is, when we obviously start making lots of money, mm -hmm. is have a proportion of our, like percentage of our profits mm -hmm. going into a fund that can help those who are not fully insured. Yes. Because, I mean, Bermuda, we're actually really high on the scale in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We've got like 88% or 86% of the population insured. Mm -hmm. But some countries have 14%. Wow. Like, literally, I was like, wait, what? And they don't even have the basic machine that mm -hmm. if you find out you have a marker for cancer, that you can have the follow-up testing to make sure you don't get They don't even have that. Wow. So I was like, okay, so this is actually a way we can make a real impact mm -hmm. and not just say, oh, well, we're not going to take money from you, but right. we can actually cover and, and cover the cost of some things, which is going to make a better impact. Yeah. So that's one way. Um, the other way as well, we will have direct-to-consumer products. Okay. So we really? have one. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> so we will have those products. But what we're looking to do is bring the price where we make money, yes, but also that it's not prohibitive. Prohibitive. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And have those ways that it can be accessed by most because... Mm -hmm. Again, we're in entering an era where it is getting more direct to consumer. Your average person, we have Ancestry.com, 23andMe, yeah. which even that type of product we are working on okay. for the region. Yay. Um, but That's doing exciting. It, I, I'm very excited about it. But we're doing it in a way that, number one, it shouldn't be prohibitive. Yeah. Also, the consumer will own their data fully yes and it will be able that they can monetize their data so we're not just That's giving you huge though right because we're not just giving you um like because other companies you can like download your files and keep them but, but they you don't, still you don't have know, the data they still so have it and when they make money you make zip right what we're going to be doing is saying no when we make money you get you some make too money. so again in that way we're not you know, it's it's that same like social good. Yeah. Because it's a win win. It's You're a win, -win winning. Right? I'm winning. Exactly. We're all winning. We're all winning, right? And so that's the way that we're handling that. Um, as you touched on, you know, social good mm -hmm. is like really in the fabric of carry genetics. And these are the different ways we're trying to do it. So yeah, it took me a little time, not gonna lie, <laughs> to get a, my head around it because I come from academics, right? Yes. And academia, and it's just all like, you know, okay, it's you take grants, these low salaries you do, yep, yep, and, you, and you, you get grants yep. and you're grinding. But it's, it's interesting because one of our board members um, on our operating company, she's been academic in genomics for years. Mm -hmm. She's based in South Africa. And she said to me, she was like, Krika, you're like, you know, as young as my, uh, could be my daughter. Yeah. She's like, I've been in this industry and I've, you know, done great things for my country, but I have nothing to really show for other mm. than papers. Right. She's like, financially, 
on There's nowhere. Nothing. So yeah. she's like, I really want to learn from you mm -hmm. because I want to see how do how do you make money in this thing? Yeah. And she wants to then be able to, you know, we're going to work with her to have something over there as well when the time's right. But it's really seeing that, yeah, having money isn't the bad thing. It's what you do with it. Exactly. Yes, say it again because having sometimes... <laughs> Let them hear the people you say in the back. It. The people in the back. <laughs> Having money is not a bad thing. And I think, uh, to be honest, as a people, I think, and underrepresented, yes. and undervalued, yes. and we, we definitely feel like, oh, no, 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 we shouldn't have mm -hmm. money. Like, it's a bad thing. But it's not a bad thing. And we are valuable, and we need to, you know, know what we're worth yes. and charge what we're worth. That's correct. Especially in this space, because I think I can't remember who the gentleman was, but it was someone in the industry that said, if I had money to to fund a study of half a million people, yeah, I would rather it fund people of African descent or Caribbean descent because I'm gonna get more bang for my buck versus people of European descent. So they know that we are more valuable. They do. They know this, and but the issue is that we're kind of shy, like, oh, we don't, uh, no, 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 you know, let's just do it in an altruistic I, way, which is fine, but we can still get money. I would argue that, which is, it blows my mind, like, this is the first time this is happening. Like, the fact that you said that 85% of the world population is not European. Yep. Why nobody has done this before? Like, why hasn't anyone said, you know what? I think we need to be looking at this and not just, I don't, I don't want to go off on a tangent and go talk about other things, right. but the fact that you identified it, you said, no, we're going to do this differently. And it is actually valuable data that you are collecting mm -hmm. that can actually help people yes. make more money. It's just, it blows my mind that it hasn't been done for, before, but I'm excited for you. Me too. <laughs> Because I keep get, I've asked, been asked that question a lot. It's like, so are you the first person to think of yeah. this? And I'm like, I don't know if I'm, I'm the first to think of it, but to take we're the, risk the first to do it. To do it. Right. We are the only company in the Caribbean region doing this. And the thing about it is entrepreneurship is not about the idea. Right. So maybe others have had the maybe. thought right. and said, you know, why wouldn't we? Right. It's about the doing. The it's execution. The execution yeah. and the implementation. Exactly. And that you have done. That, and you exactly. like, you got on track, tennis shoe, track, you have hit the ground running, got right? Air, Air Jordans, <laughs> I think. These are. So let's talk a little bit about some of the successes that you've had. Because yeah. literally, what? how old is Carrie Genetics? We became operational in January. This is so crazy. We're like in month 12. <laughs> the, um, the amount of things that you have done or that I've seen you do in yeah. that short amount of time, I'm just thrilled i'm like overjoyed for you and Thank for you. the country and for the caribbean and for people yeah. black and brown people yes, you know all yes. over the world these are big things and it's happening right here in bermuda right. each your courses yeah i am so excited <laughs> okay so let's talk about some of the things that you have done okay. and accomplished so the first thing we had to do was raise some money yeah because yeah it takes have, money I, to make it, money it, it didn't have no money and <laughs> and that's another thing as well i would say is you know we don't us as you know people yeah. of our you know color and we don't have like a trust fund to yes. say yeah, let me just try this thing out like we have to really like dig deep and i'm the first in my family to do a lot of things yeah definitely the first one to do anything like this so yeah raising money that yeah. was the first thing i will say i started raising after yesterday the 21st yes. it was the 19th of december last year okay when i officially i like, could start raising because we finally had like the all the documents and everything mm -hmm. um i have been like kind of like wooing some in potential investors yeah. already so once the day came and they got the document by the end of the year we had raised two hundred thousand. okay which was like okay people people coming through like, <laughs> they're not just talking yeah they, they open up their pockets yeah. so okay so with that i was able to i had three of my friends mm -hmm. and you know potential employees that were like on standby and i said look if you raise the money we'll start in january we raised it we started January 3rd. So it was four of us, right? Myself as CEO and everything else. Um, director of research and all that. You know that. CEO stands for chief everything officer, right? I'm gonna use that because, <laughs> oh my God, the things I be doing, I'm like, why am I doing this like it? Um, and then we had a project manager because we knew we had the Kahal project. Yes. We had funding for that. And we also have funding for a breast cancer site. But no one knew that at the time because we couldn't Say we didn't have access. Okay. We did have funding for it. So we knew we had those projects. So he, we had project manager. And then we had um, the layup manager because mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't be in the layup. 
I can't be running a company and be the no, scientist. No, you can't. Like, yes. Although I'm a technical founder, but I can't be doing everything. So I knew I had to I have a lab person. Um, and those two, actually, I'm going to name them. So Tarek being Darrow, project manager at the time. And then, so we changed his title now. We actually posted him yesterday. He's now the log- operation, logistics and operations manager. All right. Um, Congratulations, yeah. Tarek. <laughs> <laughs> and then with Todd A. Tucker, she's our laboratory manager. They both came with me from the code Le- layup. Yes, okay. So Tarek was in charge of all the school testing. He was like my right-hand person for that. And Todd A. was in charge of the lab, putting the results in, um, with the Q&A, so mm-hmm. quality assurance manager. So brought them over. And then I also realized in like the lead-up that it was a lot of people I was talking to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't talk to all these people by myself. So I brought on someone who was going to be our stakeholder relations manager. So that was a team. I brought them on. I said, look, we have money till March. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's it. In hindsight, like, it's crazy, but, like, we got three months. Yeah. Right? To get- and I, I looked at, so Christian Stevens is our stakeholder relations manager, mm-hmm. so that obviously covered investor relations as well. And I said to him in the first meeting, I said, we got to raise money. Yeah. And if we don't, we we don't exist past right, March. Right. Like, that's basically it. So we stomped the ground and we talked, you know, whilst they were kind of putting the process in place, mm-hmm. St- St- Christian and I were going around. And it got to the point where... Remember March? Yes. End of March. <laughs> it got to the point where the first weekend in March, I was calling people who in last year yeah. this time said, I can't do it now, but I can do it in Q1. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, it's Q1 now. I'd like, let's go. Yeah. You say it. Remember you L- said like, that? Like, rem- like, yeah. I got good memory. <laughs> and everyone was like, I can't. And I was just like, <sighs> honestly, I was like, I can't believe I brought these people on and... Now, now what am I this doing? Mm-hmm. like it just felt like yeah okay guys we might have to just pack. I honestly actually reached out to some of the investors, like who oh I knew yeah. you know like friends and family as it were and I was like yeah I think it might not work. I'll keep you posted, but mm-hmm. it's looking pretty bleak at this point. And my mind was going up like mentally I was just like yep. I tried. Like, yeah. I tried. You yeah. know, no one can say I didn't give it a go. But I was like mentally like, ready to pack it up, honestly. That was the first weekend in March. And then we had a meeting with an uh, investor the next week. Now, I had went to that person for a corporation before, mm-hmm. and they were like not as receptive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they wanted the document. So I gave it to them in December, hadn't heard from them for a while. I told Christian that I just see follow up. Like we just tried everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they're like, yeah, let's have a meeting. And I expected us to be like, you know, having to really convince them. And they came and said, well, I've done my due diligence. And this is the person that spoke to someone in the pharmaceutical mm-hmm. industry and said, you know, ask them, is this data that pharmaceutical companies would want? And that person said, yes. They want this data specifically for getting the yeah. customer. It's more targeted. And obviously, the what they have now, the genetics, is only for a small portion, so they need more diverse data. So he came back to us and was like, look, this is the person's name. I went to talk to her because she's going to be a great, had her business card and yeah. everything. And then was like, we're going to talk about investment. Let's put it back on the table. Half a million. I said, <laughs> I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I was just like, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and when the, when the person left, You're me and Christian were like, what? <laughs> What just happened? Yes, right. I love it. So it was it wasn't a confirmed thing, but it was yeah. like that's that's where we're kind of gauging it. And but it, was it like, gave you what you needed to say. Okay, no, what? I wasn't tripping. This is a honestly, thing. honestly, and it was yeah. literally the next so, uh, on that Saturday night. That's when I was like having this meltdown, and then this was Tuesday following that. So I was like, okay, so there is something yeah. going on here, you yeah. know, and that was going to be enough for us to get through the next year, right? Right. right. Salary wise for the four of us. So I was like, okay, cool. And then we had other investor meetings that were already set up. And then literally <laughs> by, because we had a deadline of the March 31st for mm-hmm. the, the type of investment we're using. But it's a safe. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's been used as much in Bermuda, mm-hmm. but I highly recommend it. Um, so we had a deadline for March for the discount rate we had. And we had two more people that came in and we went from zero in two days where these people both confirmed. Yeah. Where we were now from zero on Tuesday and Thursday, we just had raised nine hundred twenty-five thousand. And that's how it works. And I was like, Christian, what is this? Like, <laughs> that's what, how it works. What is this? Like, what are we doing? So that's the start. And mm-hmm. then we were tracking on the Bermuda Ambassador Community website, mm-hmm. and you know, I I was using it mainly so that 
I could even see the progress. Yes, yes. Because yes. like, at least we got another 10,000. All right, we got a little drip here. We got a little drip there. Um, but when we put that in, obviously, it went way... Because we were trying to get 800. Yes. And it went way past. And um, it, it closed it mm-hmm. right away. So they called me. They're like, um... We just saw this. Is this right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Caroline, this is correct. Yeah. Um, and so then they put the press release out, and then just from that coming out, more people were interested, and then we got to and the $2 million. And that's how it works. So in four months, we raised $2 million in investment funding in Bermuda. I love it. I love it. So, I mean, it boggles my mind because this is the kind of thing that we want. We want our unicorn, right? Yes, we I, want our unicorn. Christian and loves that word. Yes, we'll because that. we don't have one. Right. But we do that. We, we, we could do. We, we, we get ready to have one. We're, we're working on that. We're working, we're on, working that. on that. Look, I know I can talk to you literally all day, I can talk every all day. All day. Um, but we don't have all that time. I but know. what I would like to do is to yeah. invite you back to keep us updated. Yes. Before we close out, though i do want you to share because i think the fact that you're in stem steam um but f- the fact that you're a black woman yes bermudian yes um is huge right yeah and it's something to be celebrated and the fact that you're doing something that has not been done before right for the entire world exactly. and has global impact yeah is huge so what do you say to that young Karika, yeah. that young person that is like you, a little young little girl who is considering it but just doesn't know what. How do you inspire them to do what you're doing? I think the best thing is just follow your passion. I didn't know what I was going to do biochemistry at all. I was just like, I like it. Sounds nice. Things interesting. And now, you know, yes, even the COVID thing was like, well, how did that come about? I'm like, mm-hmm. I-, I just wanted to do this and that was it. So follow your passion but also don't forget where you come from. Mm, I love right? that. Because to be, and I think for me when I was in England, it really resonated. Like to be from a little small island is a big deal. It's like huge. it's not many of us that it's can say not. the Bermudian in the world. And to be, and so anything we do is really like a big move. Mm-hmm. But we can't forget because when we make those big moves, we have to know that there are others who need that path. That's right. And, you know, so that's a big thing for me. It's always, always been giving back. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you have to move back home right away, but give back in some way. I was coming back once a year to do yeah. my science conference, whatever field it is you're in. But just know that also, if you have the idea, move on it. Move it. Because you, God gave it to you for a reason. Yeah. You know, so I had this idea, like, oh, well, it's not for me, but no, let me move on it. And now I was like, where have you been? I went to a conference in Trinidad last month, a urology conference, Mm -hmm. and presented because we're going to have a prostate cancer Caribbean study. And they were like, where have you been? Like, we've needed this for ages. Like, we talked about it, but no one has taken it on. And like, thank you for taking this on. And even, you know, Yas, they had a meeting with a gentleman. He's like, amazing. And he's like, he's a medical doctor in Jamaica. And he's like, you know, I wanted to start a biotech industry, but I kind of got pulled away because no one was doing biotech right. in the Caribbean so we're doing more like healthcare stuff but he's like there's not many companies like really any doing this so he's like no I've gotten revitalized yeah. as well and it's like you just know that you can do it like yes. there's nothing stopping you like at all and just to add as well we are the first solo black female founded genomics company in the world what you say now <laughs> what was that <laughs> <laughs> We are the first solo black female founded company, genomics company in the world. I wish I had one of those machines where it can make a clock. <laughs> like a game show. Because, <laughs> and because you know, I didn't know that until I was like trying to frame how, what we're doing. I'm like, wait, what? Wait, I mean, wait. Yes, hold on. you are. It's a big deal. It is a huge deal. I am super proud. I am Thank so you. glad I know you. I'm glad I knew her. <laughs> I remember back in the day. We got evidence. We got evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but please, if people are listening and they're like, look, I want to get in on this. How yes. can I invest? Please yeah. share like how they can do well, this. Well, uh, as you happen to ask, we have an investor showcase okay. that we're going to do. So, again, you know, trying to new innovative ways um, is going to be January 25th okay. at BUEI. All right. So, Please, you will see a press release coming out in January. Um, you'll be able to RSVP, and I will be basically presenting to the room, sharing everyone what, what is possible, because we are going into our natural round of funding. Yes. So, so what's the email? What's the Insta? What's all that stuff? So Instagram, all socials is at Carrie Genetics, okay. C-A-R-I 
genetics. Yes. The three two E's G E N E T I C S. Yes. It's right here. Yes. <laughs> and um, if you want more in information, especially as an investor, it's investor at carrygenetics.com. Okay. And you will get to us and we can give you more information. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for coming on. We have minded our business. You are minding all the business, all the by business. the way. <laughs> And I am here for all of it. So Thank congratulations you. on everything you have accomplished. You are doing your thing. And I know the world is going to benefit from what you're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Mind Your Business with me, your host, Jamila Lodge. Tune in next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't mind your business, who will? Mind Your Business is brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here.